Okay, so let's talk about descriptive statistics. Um, so far, we've, we've just been running frequencies, and frequencies can be useful uh, for looking at what's being treated as valid, and it can also tell us a little bit about how the dispersion of a variable is looking like. But in some instances, it's not actually very useful, especially for continuous variables. Um, so let's look at two variables. One, let's look at race, which is a discrete variable, and let's look at also real income, which is a a continuous variable. We have some values that are being treated as missing um, and we can actually add uh, another one of these because we only see that only two of them are being treated as missing. Click OK and look at race here. Um, Alright, it looks OK. We only have uh, one missing and it's being treated already as missing so we don't have to do anything there so let's go ahead and run a frequency on both of these variables again I just go on this menu type in race gives me that and then I go to real income and we click OK So it gives me my two frequency tables, and for my race variable, which is discrete, you know, it gives us uh, white, black, and other. Um, gives me the frequency, the percent, and the valid percent. So we see that this uh, sample is uh, has a large percentage of whites, 14% uh, of blacks, and 13% of people who are considered other. Um, and then looking at the continuous variable, you can see that kind of gives us a long table and uh, the percent for each one of them are very small so it's actually uh, the point is here is that for a continuous variable it doesn't give you very much information just to run a basic frequency um, so it's one of the options that you can do when you're running a frequency to give you some more information is to actually look at the central tendencies of these two variables and if we go to analyze go to descriptives we can run those some of those in the descriptives uh, as separate from your frequencies, but you can also add them to your frequency command. And to do that, let's look at just race, uh, which is a discrete variable. We just click on statistics, and we see here on this little upper right hand box, uh, it gives us three types or four types of central tendencies mean, which is the average, uh, medium, which is um, t where the 50% mark is for your sample and the mode the most common response and um, for a discrete variable calculating the mean and the medium isn't really going to be very informative actually it doesn't mean anything because um, how race is coded is arbitrary so let's just click on continue and click OK and it tells us in this first box um, that the mode, the most common response, is white, um, which makes sense because there's 72 percent of the sample. So let's look at some of the descriptives that we can run for continuous variables. So there we just go to analyze, descriptives, frequency, and we are interested in real income. Move that guy over click on statistics and here we're going to unclick mode and we're going to click on median and we click on mean and we just click on continue now all those uh, extra statistics are provided for us and it tells us that the mean is this huge number over here and the median is a huge number over here so in terms of income the average is 26,353 and the median income in the United States is around 17,000. Of course this GSS that we're looking at has been kind of reduced. Uh, we, we took out some of the uh, respondents so this might not actually correspond to the correct average of the United States but just to give you an example of how it can calculate um, the central tendencies. There's also other dispersion statistics that we can run uh, for continuous variables.
we look back at the statistics. It can also give us some more dispersion statistics in terms of standard deviation, variance, um, can give us the minimum, um, the maximum values, the range, and we can just click on continue. And here are those statistics. It gives us the mean, again, the median. It gives us the standard deviation. And then we have uh, the variance. The lowest was 275, and the highest was around 113,000, with a range of uh, over 100,000. Go to Analyze, and we can click on Descriptives instead of Frequencies. And here, uh, you can click on Options, and it tells you um, what kind of uh, descriptive statistics you want to show without running the frequency. So we can do Variance, we can do Range, um, and we can just click OK, Continue, and just Real Income. And again, you can tell what's a continuous variable here because the SPSS gives you this little ruler um, or, as opposed to these guys which are discrete variables. We can click on, on another, for instance, SCI, um, the Social Economic Index, which also tells us it's a continuous variable. We can click on that guy and just run both of them. And here it breaks down these two, um, these two variables. One is income and the other one is social economic index. It tells us the N, how many people actually responded to this question. It gives us the range of scores. So for income, it's, which is just a dollar amount, it's rather large. Um, there's over 100,000, um, the difference between the minimum and the maximum. Uh, for a social economic index, it's only from, it's, there's only a, a range of 80. So it goes from 17 to 97 and uh, it gives us the mean. Uh, this is 26,000 and this one is around 50. Um, and it gives us a standard deviation for each as well as the variance. Okay, let's say we're interested in um, figuring out what's the difference in income between men and women. Um, and we have this data for income, so that would be reasonably easy to do, but we just have to tell SPSS to break these two apart. Uh, and there's several different ways to do this. One of them is just by doing going to data and uh, select cases. T select cases if, click on this if box. This uh, window pops up and we can choose sex by just typing in sex, S-E-X. And um, if I right click on this variable, it will give me some information uh, about this variable, how it's coded. And we can see that males are coded as one. So if I just want to look at what males make, I can just close this box and put it over here. Sex equals one. And click continue. So this is telling SPSS just to select males. And click OK. Now if I run um, the descriptive on just males, and um, click OK. So we see here that uh, 1,300 males answered this question. Um, the maximum is 113,000, the minimum is 275, and the medium is around $30,000 or $31,000. Um, if I want to look at females, I can go to Select Cases. Okay, now I'm going to change the conditions for how SPSS is selecting cases. Um, now instead of one, I can just put two and click Continue and press OK. Run the same descriptives again. Press OK. And we see here that the mean income for women actually is much lower. It's 21,000 as opposed for men, which is 30,000. Um, 
we have almost an equal number of men and women answering this question, um, but the standard deviation and the mean are kind of um, significantly different. Now, it's important that after you've run this analysis, and if you actually look at your SPSS file, um, look at your data view, you can see that SPSS is, is selecting out respondents that um, are not female. So an X marks means here that this is a male respondent and SPSS is not including this person in the analysis. Now this filter is on as long as that command is still valid. So if you're going to run any other analysis, you need to take off uh, that condition. And you can just click on select all cases. Click OK. And uh, you can just look back on your data view and you see that all cases are now being selected.